Hi everyone, today let's talk about the Microsoft Activision ruling, then we'll talk about the AI adoption timeline, then we'll go over the economic calendar, as well as Max Payne for the Friday expiration, then we'll get into the charts, as well as my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Microsoft had some movement towards the Activision acquisition, highlighting some of the difficulties that the FTC is facing in challenging this acquisition. They said the federal judge rejected the preliminary injunction preventing Microsoft from purchasing Activision Blizzard. Obviously, the deal is still paused due to the UK competition enforcers opposition to the deal. So even if we approve it here, they're not going to be able to execute until they get approval everywhere. And right now, the UK is still blocking it. The FTC case was based on the fact that they think Microsoft is going to limit Activision's games only to the Xbox. And we've talked about that on this channel before. It doesn't make sense for them to do so. Call of Duty is on all platforms and it makes a ton of money. And if they were to limit it to Xbox, they would lose quite a bit of money doing so. This is not to say that they might make some of the games exclusive, but this is not unusual for Microsoft. Sony does this as well for PlayStation. There are lots of games that are exclusive to each platform and arguably Microsoft is behind in this right and this would be a way for Microsoft to catch up to Sony and for the biggest games like I said it doesn't make sense. They also argued that this poses a threat to cloud gaming and subscription services which is a very very small segment of the console wars and it really doesn't make very much sense to me. And honestly, if Sony thinks this is such a big deal, they should move into cloud gaming and try to compete with Microsoft. Honestly, this doesn't make very much sense to me. I think the better argument is that they are going to move certain things over to Microsoft only. But like I said, even that argument is fairly weak, in my opinion. Moving over to the AI adoption timeline, they're arguing that if AI adoption is anything like these major changes that we've seen in the past, then we could just be in those very, very early stages before we see those large upswings in technologies that have changed the world. And AI could absolutely be one of those technologies that does change the world significantly, meaning that we should generally be buying into AI investments in these early stages. I think you can make a good argument that investments and early adoption happens faster now than it ever has before, but it is interesting to compare it to these other historical changes. In the article, they also mentioned the internet, which took from 1990 to 2007 to reach 75% penetration. Again, that's about two decades, and if AI did follow a timeline like that, we should expect around two decades of AI integration, meaning that NVIDIA and Microsoft should enjoy a multi-decade period of rewards based on their progress in AI, and this could be especially good for investors. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see the three-year note coming in much higher than the previous read. Interest rates continuing to sit quite high. And then tomorrow we have CPI expected to be quite low. I think the expectations might be a little bit optimistic and we might actually miss to the upside. If we don't miss to the upside, this could be a positive driver for markets to go higher. We also have the 10-year auction here in the afternoon. I would expect that to be much higher than the previous read, closer to 4% as well. And that could also be a major driver for markets in the afternoon. Yields have been going higher, and that could be a sign of weakness for equities going forward. Moving over to Thursday, don't forget we do have core and headline PPI. As well, as well as the federal budget expected to be a pretty significant cut from the previous read, and then the Fed balance sheet and Fed Waller in the afternoon. Moving over to Max Payne, sitting at 440, moved up a little bit. Highest call strike now for 50 options, almost up to a million. Put call ratio stepping down pretty significantly. Still thinking that 442 is going to be that max upside. We're right on top of that now, meaning that if we throw a big wick to the upside on CPI, we start to get some rejection in, into the end of the week. Certainly possible. Right now, if we do finish at the top of the puts, that would be up around 446. And these 442 calls would make some money. You could certainly argue that that is possible going into the end of the week, so keep that in mind. But to me, I think 442 is going to be the top of the markets and we'll probably finish somewhere below that at the end of the week. 
Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the hour and the 12 hour, you can see we had a nice rally on the S&Ps, took out this level, pushed higher right into these previous highs, looking to push into this previous consolidation up around 443.59. If this level breaks, then I'm watching 445.49. Again, thinking of max pain, if we get into this zone, I would expect rejection. You can see this is kind of wedging up here a little bit. On the 12 hour chart, looking at key resistance in this zone, even if we get in here, I would expect rejection and a pullback down into that 440 area. Moving over to the NASDAQ, similar thesis came down, hit that 200 SMA on the one hour chart. It did stop me out early in the session, breaking my 364 level. I did get back in after we got back above it. And then I participated in the rally throughout the rest of the day, just about. At the end of the session, we rallied pretty aggressively back above 367.63. I decided to limit my positions going into CPI, so I didn't reestablish at this level, but I will be looking for some positions going into tomorrow's session after the CPI data. Looking at the 12 hour chart, you can see similar to the SPY, holding above levels, holding above SMAs, looking to push up to 371.25. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow on the four hour chart, Russell broke out above 189, also broke above trend resistance. I'm watching a level at 190.68, but otherwise next major resistance horizontal wise, but otherwise next horizontal resistance up at 195.15, watching for a big move through this zone. Certainly could consolidate a little bit here, but we are definitely bullish on the Russell. Dow similarly moving much higher here today, broke trend resistance, moved higher, looking for 343.23 and a push up to 345.24 over the next day or two. Moving over to the equal weighted S&Ps here on the four hour chart, you can see we've been rallying and this has been a super clean rally off of the 55 EMA, momentum bullish, RSI bullish, looking for a push up to 153.19. We got clear rejection from 149.82 last week retested it yesterday, gapped above it, rallied here today, and everything looks pretty good on equal weighted, confirming the rally to the upside. Moving over to Tesla and Apple. Apple not doing much of anything. Bounced off VWAP and the 9 EMA, still consolidating at 186.81. Tesla waiting to see if this level holds and rallies up into our next resistance that I've been watching. We talked about this in yesterday's video. Looking for this continuation, break out to the upside, and then a break down from that clear resistance around 302. Momentum still moving towards bullish, RSI hovering around that 50 line. And right now we're still consolidating at that trend support. Moving over to Meta and Broadcom, you can see Meta continues to be relentless, just barely below a key level to 98.15, watching to see if it can get above that level and trend resistance and push up to 321. Right now, trend super bullish, everything looks good. Momentum bullish, RSI also bullish. Looking at Broadcom, you can see it's been consolidating in this zone. Looking at this previous high, it is right there right now. If it breaks this level, I'll be watching for a push up to 920, which was the high from this wick up around that level. You can see clear consolidation, holding trend, looking good, momentum, cooling slightly, but still bullish. RSI, still bullish, not overbought quite yet. Everything looks okay here on Broadcom. Moving over to consumer staples and consumer discretionary. Staples bouncing off of trend once again, still consolidating in this area. It did throw a big wick down to that lower trend line, which is interesting. It still continues to hold in the zone, so you could absolutely trade off of that level. But we're not even close to that 74, looking for that break up to the next high. So still neutralized here on staples, in my opinion. Discretionary, we talked about this wedge last time. It continues to do that here, moving higher, looking for a retest up around 173.48 or so, somewhere in that zone. Everything looks okay. And this is what I'm expecting Tesla to do as well. Break up from support up to that next resistance. Moving over to oil and gas and industrials. Oil and gas moving higher, just like we thought that it was going to. Getting back into this next resistance up at 135.07. Industrials making new highs here. It's been on a massive run from 96.77 up to 109. Super, super bullish. Everything looks super bullish here on industrials. Continues to have bullish momentum, bullish RSI, and make much, much higher highs. 
Moving over to transports, similar thesis, been on a massive run, continues once again here today, looking for trend resistance up around 265.50, which would be in this previous consolidation, makes sense. You can see lots of volume traded in that zone before we had the more significant breakdown, and we're pushing back into there now. Bullish momentum, bullish RSI, everything looking good on transports, waiting to see that overbought condition before we even consider a pullback, which like I said is up around trend resistance around 265, 266. Moving over to breadth on the 50 and 200, you can see 50 breaking out, looking to push up into this next resistance at 92.25. If we get into that zone, that's going to be a pretty good indicator that we are topping out. Last time we got there, it was a significant pullback. That was the December high, and it's taken us all the way up until now to get back into that zone. 200 day, similar thesis, taking out this previous high, looking to push up to 76. We have this wedge formation starting to happen. If we get into the zone and reject, might be a little bit more consolidation higher. But if we overthrow it into that zone and then break down, that's going to be quite bearish. But right now, everything looks good to go higher tomorrow. Moving over to yields, two year and 10 year, basically went nowhere today. Two year chopping sideways, 10 year did move a little bit lower right at my level. 3.974, it's at 3.976, so consolidating in the zone, momentum still bearish, but at this point I would expect it to hold here, as we do expect yields to be a little bit higher for longer. Moving over to the dollar here on the hourly and the daily, you can see we've been selling off for four days in a row, really dramatic move from resistance, double top, move lower. We've been calling for 101.25 for a while, and it looks like that might happen here tomorrow. Looking at the hourly chart just for a little bit, you can see it's still chopping, broke resistance, retested, broke down again, but it's holding fairly well in the zone. I would have expected it to break down a little bit further. We're right at the top of this consolidation here, and like I said, I would expect to get to the lows of that consolidation before we see any kind of major bounce. Momentum and RSI are both bearish, and I would expect the dollar to move lower, propping equities up at least a little bit. Moving over to J&K and TLT, J&K got the candle break on the 12 hour, continued higher, nice to see it, confirming rally, RSI breaking 50, MACD looking more bullish, TLT still consolidating, rallied slightly but still in a pretty heavy downtrend. Like I said, I expect government yields to stay higher for longer and TLT is feeling the effects of that, whereas J&K is finding some demand. Moving over to the volatility indices, move index fell a little bit today, VIX basically sideways. Not much to add here, momentum is bearish, RSI still looking a little bit lower for the VIX. You want to see it get above 1490, hold that level and then move higher. And right now it's rejected from its highs, consolidating at that level. Certainly could go either way from here, but not showing clear direction quite yet. Moving over to my accounts, I didn't do terrible. I should have made more money on the IWM move higher. I did do okay. I should have rolled out this 188 probably to Monday, rolled it up and out a little bit. IWM has been relentless here. I did sell a 190 call in my taxable account. I would love to see that executed. That would be a great profit as well. But overall, still taking advantage of the IWM, pushing higher, looking bullish. Qs. I ended up holding these 366 calls into the close. I wanted to get executed on those and get the profit there. I also sold a 366 put for tomorrow for a dollar. I didn't want to be super bullish going into the CPI. I think the Qs would take the brunt of it if we did see a miss on CPI. I don't necessarily think that that's going to happen, but if it is good tomorrow, I'm sure I can get in and still make some decent money. Overall, slightly bullish going into tomorrow's session across the board. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the Activision deal or AI. Is AI going to be the next boon for the stock market and for traders? Or is this going to be a shorter lived thing and it's not actually going to have that same systemic change that we saw from electricity or the cell phone or the smartphone? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.